Hey, what's up folks? Uh, it's Robo here. Here's my night vision. Well, it's actually in pieces here, but uh, I'm here in uh, Op4 Night Solutions' new clean room. He's got a new operation going on, um, or new facility, I should say, uh, for making all the night vision that uh, you guys have seen on my profile through Op4 Night Vision Solutions. Um, so what we're gonna do today is I'm upgrading uh, or swapping out, I shouldn't say upgrading, but I'm just swapping out some new tubes and I am sort of upgrading, air quotes here, um, from RPO or Rochester Precision Optics. Um, uh, RPO 2.0s, which I have on my 1431s, uh, to RPO 3.0s. Not really a monumental, a huge upgrade, but sometimes I like to get the new goody goody rather than the just slightly, uh, you know, a couple years old uh, stuff. So um, let's get at that. I'm going to install the tubes in the pods, I'm going to install new lenses, and I've got another camera over here to actually record that. I do kind of want to give you an overview while I, I do work on this. Um, uh, my buddy Z, or again, uh, owner of Op4 Night Solutions, uh, is actually taught me a little bit about night vision. Usually he builds this for me, but uh, I've had, been lucky enough to have his sort of tutelage to show me. I'm just kind of an interested guy when it comes to technical things like this. Not that I'm here to build night vision forever uh, or tinker with this at home. It's just interesting to do it if I got to do the work anyways, or, or if the work has to be done anyways. So that in mind, let's uh, check it out as I work on this. So a little different view here. Like I said, uh, this is the bridge of uh, the 1431 Mark IIs uh, that Op4 Night Solution um, sort of services here in Canada, provides here in Canada. So obviously it's looking a little light. Uh, it's because I've already prepped, okay? Uh, we've already prepped taking pods off. Um, what we've also done is taken the old tubes out, dismantled everything. We've removed all the lenses um, already. So what we're gonna start off with is actually uh, installing the tubes themselves. Again, I'm not gonna talk uh, details on all this sort of stuff. I do need to clean these though. I look pretty dust free, but I'm probably gonna take a quick swing with one of these fancy microfiber uh, sticks. Z tells me they're super expensive, so let's make sure we use uh, 18 to 20 of them. I hear they're like $1.50 each for like this little tiny Q-tippy thing, so we'll find a way to cost Z money doing this, but I'm kidding by the way. We're gonna be utmost professionals here and do exactly the way that Z taught us so I don't make him a sad panda when I screw all this up. Yeah, she looks good. Got to put this, uh, it's what's called a light bridge. Uh, it just looks like a little piece of clear plastic because that's what it is. Um, it's probably a, a piece of equipment in night vision you don't think of very much. It just transfers the indicator lights for the actual night vision housing itself. So for example, the 1431s, you know, there are different function settings that you can control through the night vision. Uh, when you screw in the battery all the way, when it's actively getting power, uh, a red indicator light will go off or when you uh, configure the you know, auto off up and down fe feature, the light indicator will show you that. So that actually just transmits uh, that, that light inside the pod itself. There we go. Perfect. Next, we're gonna have the retaining ring. Okay, so. Retaining ring probably could end up being a little bit tricky, right? Because here we've got this ring inside of a ring, like you need special tools to sort of get at it, maybe two screwdrivers kind of deal, or to make the job easier. So what Z did was he made his own tool to do this. It just makes it sort of idiot proof to a degree, as long as you really don't screw it up, right? Obviously we don't want to cross thread anything in uh, while installing uh, or putting the actual nods together. So this just allows for uh, a lining up of the notches on the retaining ring. We can make sure it's set before we can start screwing it in. Got a little bit of cross thread there, so let's just make sure, there we go. You only really want to hand tight that. Let's drop in the other one. Quick look, see for any dust that you can obviously see. And just for safe measure, we will use the old microfiber toothpick here. A Q-tip, I guess I should say. Notchy notch. So what you saw me doing there, there's actually a, a notch on the inside of the pod that the tube actually lines up with. 
And once it's in there, you can kind of feel that it's, it's in place. Again, we're gonna line this up with the notch on the inside. This is just the, um, the light bridge. I'm gonna take that retention ring, that retaining ring, drop her in there. Grab Opford's special little tool here. I'm gonna do counterclockwise just to make sure I'm setting the thread properly. And again, we're only gonna do hand tight on this. It doesn't need to be too crazy. And there we go. All right, tubes installed. We're actually gonna probably move on to installing some lenses here. What I got in my hand here, uh, it's a sexy, sexy naked uh, RPO 3.0 objective lens. So it's the one that goes in the front. Um, got to install this with the D-ring. Uh, uh, at the same time, I got to do cleaning on this too, so just bear with me real quick. When, I, when I'm spraying my hand here, I'm just uh, testing the waters in terms of pressure feel. I don't want to use this compressed air one too hard. Um, not because I, I think I'm going to break the lens. It's because it might start spitting the liquid, the liquid that's on the inside, and that gets really annoying to fix. Um, so I'm just being cautious, making sure that all the dusty dusties are off the inside there. Front doesn't matter as much because we can always clean that after, right? What I'm worried about is, let me just get that decolor on there. Uh, what I'm worried about is much like why I clean the tubes. Once I close this up, whatever's in there is in there. And yeah, I could de disassemble it, but I'm trying to do it the right way the first time, right? So this, all we're gonna do is screw it onto the front. I'm gonna catch the thread to this decaller here and start screwing her on. Sounds dirty when I say that, screw her on, but you know what I mean. All right, we've got that front lens on. I'll do this other one just because again, I'm cleaning these and I haven't set up the other lenses yet. Decaller's already on this one. And I'm just gonna do a little ring over here just to make sure. Thought I saw a little bit of a speckle. Coolio, so same process. Other pod, the objective or front edge, the front end I should say, not edge. Caught the, uh, the old threading here, gonna thread on the decaller. Now the one thing I'm gonna have to follow up with on this is that there's actually uh, retaining screws, right? Tension screws that'll go in here. I'll put those in in a minute. Uh, what I'm gonna focus on first and foremost is actually the eyepieces themselves. I do have to clean these as well. They're a little bit easier. There's no two piece here. Like technically there is in terms of actually getting the eyepiece into the, the eye cup. We, we've already done that, okay? So I don't need to show you that. I'm just gonna make sure these are all clean though. So in any case, uh, cleaned out the lens here. Pod, tube in it, right? Objective lens already installed. I think there we got it. So again, see how that screws on nice and easily. If this was any harder to screw in, um, it's a good indication that you should probably stop what you're doing. Don't force it, okay? It should go pretty easily. Uh, if you're forcing it, you're probably cross-threading and cross-threading especially uh, um, sort of plastic or, or uh, threads that, it, that at least integrate with plastic, you're probably gonna have a pretty bad day. So what you wanna do with this is you wanna screw it all the way down to the bottom till it sort of overhangs a bit and you wanna back it off by uh, a half a turn essentially. So we'll get it all the way on here. And then we're gonna just back it off about a half a turn, okay? So there, we got pod. It's gonna be my right pod. We've just arbitrarily decided that. And I think we're pretty good there. I know this must be very exciting. You watch me turn two cylinders together. That's what you pay me the big bucks to do. Boom, stops. Half a turnout, probably good to go. We're almost done, uh, and that's kind of amazing. Again, we've got tubes in here. We've added lenses, okay? Got my right pod, got my left pod, and I've got that bridge I showed you. Obviously, you're seeing some circuitry here. What's the circuitry for? Well, duh, it's what you attach your pod to, okay? It's what controls night vision, okay? So I'm just going to very carefully mount these. I can get my gorilla hands to, to actually do it properly here, but yeah, all I'm gonna do, very carefully, 
Easy peasy, one pod on. Then the, the only thing you kind of have to watch when you attach a pod from my position is obviously it's where the connective circuitry is, okay? From between the bridge itself and the pod. Do take a little bit of care. I mean, I'm not talking like it's really hard to line these things up, but if you go quickly, if you think this is just like, a, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to do repairs, you're trying to fiddle with this like you were fiddling with like a $15 like Walmart DVD player because you had to buy one because grandma would give you a bunch of DVDs and nobody buys DVDs anymore. Like, fair enough. You could treat that thing like crap. Do take a little bit of care with this stuff, even though it is pretty idi idiot proof. It's not the most complicated stuff uh, to fit together. You make one mistake and in the night vision world, can result in a pretty expensive learned lesson. So there you have it, they're put together. Now there are some other steps we have to do to make these complete, okay? So, so like I said, we've got a couple extra steps here. I mean, we're pretty much together, right? Um, I do have to put these set screws into the D collar, which allows me to set my infinity stop. Uh, I haven't tightened down the set screws on the eyepiece just yet. So with all of that sort of wrapped up, I do, like I said, I do want to swap out this little uh, battery cap retaining uh, strap. Big deal. I'm being a, just a special special kid wanting to, to match his night vision strap to his night vision pods. So we're going to just quickly do that. There we go. Multicam black on there. There we go. Easy peasy, as they say, lemon squeezy. Just refit everything back together. And voila, we've got our swapped out tubes, brand new RPO 3.0 lenses. Uh, same with the eye pieces. I still have the eye cup uh, actual molds or housings themselves. Uh, they're the same as what I'm using. I just swapped out the glass uh, behind them. And then again, the objective lenses here. New retaining strap for my battery compartment. Big thumbs up. That's all it takes, folks. So with the actual build itself done, and you know, again, we ran through it. It's not the most complicated thing in the world. That doesn't mean, okay, you just slap together night vision and then you're done, okay? There is one step uh, that I would change what I said about the easy peasy lemon squeezy in terms of putting the thing together, and that is the calibration. It's all of the final sort of steps, uh, making sure everything is aligned correctly, that every, your infinity stops are good and you've calibrated uh, the night vision to be perfectly, perfectly in focus, aligned, etc. okay? So here at Op4 Night Solutions, okay? Yeah, you could, okay? You could take these outside, use your eyes to sort of calibrate, okay? You can sort of wing it per se, uh, but here at Op4 Night Solutions, um, Z and uh, the organization here actually has uh, a special machine, okay? It's made by Hoffman Engineering, and it's specifically made for calibrating uh, night vision optics, okay? So we're gonna show you a little bit of that process. Again, we're not going too technically detailed here, this ain't a university course, uh, but what I do wanna show you is just the process end to end, okay? So we're gonna cut over to there, and we're gonna finish off uh, all the magic on the Hoffman Engineering machine. We're just making sure that once we put all this together, sure it looks great when your eyes are up uh, against it, but uh, Off4 Night Solutions just has invested in the technology to be absolutely mathematically, scientifically sure of what our eyes are gonna see and the end product might be or will be to that fact. And the cool thing with uh, the Hoffman machine is actually when, when Z sells um, retail orders, I mean, he can even provide these uh, results um, in the form of you know, everybody knows about spec sheets and whatnot that come with tubes, uh, but he can actually print off performance sheets essentially for the specific pairs of night vision that he's building uh, for his customers and provide them with hard copies of that information. So Z's got a, a test currently in progress uh, with some of these tubes. And again, you start to see test is in progress, shows, uh, scans all this, the areas that it can see and again, like I said, if you're noticing that, it kind of looks like an eye test, uh, but it's an eye test for night vision optics. So it looks a little bit different, but same basic premise. Uh, the better the tube, the more stuff you can see or the smaller things you can see, kind of like those trailing or ending sort of uh, lines of letters that you'll see at an optometrist. But yeah, that's essentially what it's doing when you attach it 
to the eyepiece here. It's actually doing all of those reads and doing the tests automatically for you. And then once this is all done, um, essentially uh, we would move to a nitrogen purge just to make sure that we're pushing out all the moisture, any sort of non-neutral uh, non environment or atmosphere within uh, the optics themselves. And that's just to make sure that they've got longevity. There's nothing inside that'll harm them and to make sure they've got all their, their seals properly sealed, et cetera, et cetera. So as a final step on the Hoffman here, um, before you go and generally will nitrogen purge, that's what this machine down there is, is uh, Z's putting on what's called the collimation bridge. You'll notice that he's got a bridge, one's got right, one's got left, and then he's got the sensor on the top. What you're actually doing is you're bouncing the image so it merges into one. So that sensor is essentially overlaying both images into one. And your entire goal, much like uh, looking through a scope, is you're trying to make sure both of those images uh, align with the center over themselves without any duplication or ghosting of the image in the center of that image. So once that's achieved, it's considered factory set and you are done. Really the care is put into the calibration to make sure the image is as crisp and clear as uh, it should be for the money that you're putting into things like lenses, tubes, housings for night vision, right? <clears throat> as we all know, it's a little bit of a pricey game to get into, even though now in the modern age, uh, that price has gotten better. It's still a pretty significant purchase that one can make. Um, so again, Op4 Night Solutions, that's why I love them. Uh, Z takes care of me, but he also does really, really, really friggin' good work, uh, especially when I'm, you know, myself and others are spending their hard-earned money uh, to enjoy night vision. So thank you Z, thank you uh, Op4 Night Solutions, and there you go. Night vision, Panos, Z, and then Hoffman. Good night, y'all.